Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. We're going to pick up right where we left off with me trying to figure out uh, a spike, just sort of hacking in um, how we can have the table change when uh, a text field is changed. And um, I'm doing a lot of ugly stuff right now, but that's okay. This is a spike. I'm doing the spike on production code, which I actually usually prefer to avoid, but um, I figure I'll do this in a uh, basically, I'll just revert the code when I'm done. The reason I don't usually do that is because the complexity of the application code is usually more than the complexity of a spike, which means you end up dealing with stuff that you wouldn't otherwise want to deal with. And actually, we are seeing that here. Um, so, I think my normal instincts are correct, but say let me. Now, what's wrong here? So um, now that we have access to the forecast table, we should be able to say forecast table dot set model um, I just I'll just replace the contents of the table when uh, when we change that value. What's the matter here? Okay. So let's see if that works. Okay, so far so good. I do this and I press enter. Oh, look at that. Um, that was cool. Let me do it again. Yeah. What if I tab away? Nothing. Okay, so action listener isn't isn't what I want. Um, really need it to be when this value is confirmed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and do a little more uh, research. Okay, I'm back. I think I've got it figured out. What I need to do is a focus listener. So um, for now, I'm going to comment this out because I want to see how the behavior changes. But uh, I'm going to have an add focus listener which is going to take a focus adapter because there's two methods in there. One is called focus gained and one is called focus lost. And I only care about the focus lost list, uh, event. And that's going to be, uh, what does that take? The focus adapter takes a focused focus event And when that happens, I'm going to do that again. Okay, let's see if that works. So we do all that stuff, we press enter, nothing happens, we move away, it does its thing. Okay, great. So what we need is both of these together so that when we do our thing and press enter, or when we do our thing and click away, it works. Awesome. Now I did see another option, which I'm not going to try right now, which was a, um, it's a document listener. And what that would allow me to do is it would allow me to actually react in real time to this changing. And that might be kind of cool, but it's also kind of distracting. I mean, if I've got 10,000 in there and then I want to change it to 12,000, every time I press something, uh, it's going to be changing the table. And performance could be an issue at that point, too. We don't want, if, if it was synchronous, we don't want it to like slow down the rate at which we can type things. Uh, again, I wouldn't let the performance issues bother me, but just I, I don't see a lot of value in having it be instant. If I can press Enter and have it do its thing, that's great. So there's that. Um, so I need a add action listener and I need an add focus listener. And once again, I'm seeing why it would have been valuable to have this as a standalone spike because I don't want to um, 
I don't want to keep this, but I want to keep the notes. So I'm just going to toss this down here in my scratch pad for now. But um, this I need to put, or where is it? This I need to put back. So let's undo. Okay, and do we have passing tests? We do. Does the application still work the way it used to? It does, okay. All right, so now that I know what I want to do, the question is how do I write this in such a way that it's tested? And the interesting thing that I realized was that as I was going through this spike, I had to have access to the forecast table. And that's, I mean, you don't really want to be passing these things around um, in, you know, you don't want your components to have to have access to the other components. That's what the models are for. That's what model view controller is all about. The components talk to the model. The model informs the other components of what's going on. So I wonder, I mean, I don't want to overcomplicate this, but I wonder if what I need is my own model. Uh, the application model, say. And then what I would do is I'd, the action performed would say application model dot update balance. And then that would do the right thing. I don't know. I have, I have this, I think a lot of programmers do. I really try to avoid letting this come out, but I have this love of complexity. I like making really complicated designs that have all these intricate moving parts and feel really clean. And when I show them to somebody else, they say, what is this mess? I mean, it's just, you know, hideous. So I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I want to avoid that. But at the same time, I don't want to have a big giant mess in my code. So, I'm, I'm counting on all of you out there in internet land to, uh, <laughs> sorry, that was incredibly cheesy. Um, anyway, I'm counting on you, my, my many viewers, all three of you, or, or however many it is, uh, to please tell me if I'm going off the deep end. I think it might be a good idea for me to make an application model to coordinate between these various components. Um, I hope you will tell me if I'm right or wrong or, you know, if this is a good idea or not. So please give me feedback. I'm going to go ahead and try it. So uh, let's close some of this stuff down. Um, yeah. Let's make an application model. So what would that, I think, I, I don't know. I don't know. This is, uh, but I'm really happy to be doing this. This is cool stuff. I mean, we're getting into some really interesting stuff now, I think. So application model test. Up until now, I mean, we've done 61 videos now. Up until now, um, you know, it was sort of, there was a lot of work and it was, it was hard, but we weren't doing anything that hasn't, that, uh, that wasn't sort of, basic stuff, but now I think we're getting to some really interesting stuff. Um, anyway, let's uh, get this working. Okay, so what is the application model gonna do? Um, well, when we create it, it's going to have um, it's going to start, should start with default stock market model. Table model. Um, so what we're doing here in our application frame where we're creating the stock market. Yes, yes, yes. That 
we should be able to right here say stock market table model and um, have the application model give us that. So I think what we want is we want to be able to say application model oops, too many listeners um, we want to be able to say sorry, these, these red squigglies, they drive me crazy Roy Ostro talked about doing, you know, writing the whole test before you start doing even the subcode, and I agree with that, but I'm way too anal retentive to have red squigglies in my code. So I can't do it. I just can't do it. Um, so anyway, we need, I want to be able to say model.git stock market table model. Or maybe just since I don't like access or style, what about that? Well, stock market table model. Actually, in this case, I think I would want to get. So, do we want the stock market table model or just the stock market? That's the question. Do we want to do it this way? Application dot stock market table model, or do we want to say application dot stock market? I don't know. But I do know that the stock market would be easier to test than the stock market table model. Uh, so let's start there and see what happens. We can always change it later. So model.stockmarket projection. Yeah, that feels right. Um, Let's just start by saying that should not be null. Yeah. And so we're going to want to return a new stock market projection. And that, of course, has all the values. Um, which we currently have in here. And that's what we want, but I want to have tests around those things, so default them to the wrong values to start with. So I can see it fail when I'm doing the tests. So that should pass because it's not null anymore. Um, okay, what's going on? Oh. Proponents of mock objects would, would say that's why you use mock objects because I had a, a spurious failure due to just me doing something funky. Um, all right. Okay. And what I want is I want for this projection to have certain default values. But that's all the time we have in this episode. So we're going to pick up next time with fleshing out the application model. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you next time.